Welcome back, Death Toll Racing. We're going to build a flex ramp today, uh, a little bit like what you're seeing here, except we need ours to be quite a bit bigger. All right, I got a rough idea what I want, so I'm building this all off my head, so uh, out of my head. Uh, I didn't really draw this out, so uh, you'll see me scratching my head a little bit to, and, and figuring stuff out. But uh, we're going to start off by just building the box that the car will be sitting on before we build the ramp. So we're going to double this this uh, ramp as also a car show ramp uh, so that we can have the, the safari wagon or maybe something else up on the ramp. Uh, I originally started building cutting parts for two of them. Um, so you'll see some extra parts on the ground. I edited out a lot of the cutting and, and welding of those ones. Um, I edited that out because uh, it turned out I wasn't going to have enough material to build two of them. Plus, I wasn't 100% certain it was going to work out the way I wanted it to. I was pretty cert pretty confident in it, but not 100% confident in it. So what I did is I, I just made one of them perfect. Then I just added some tubes uh, and then I built the other frames on top. I, uh, again, I built four of them, but I'm, I'm just showing you building two. Um, the, other, the other two are just sitting off to the side now I'm just putting the legs on so I'm just making them square but only tacking them lightly um, so I welded underneath ground down just the edges where the tubes sit uh, and this is basically we're just building a rectangle cube right now all right and so I just put an angle iron on the on, on the side or a flat tube on the side and then clamp it together um, so, so that it, it lines the edges up uh, that's what I was doing with that clamp there. Um, those are the best vice grip clamps for fabricating. Um, they're meant for, for pipe. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below. I actually need to order a couple sets of them myself. I only have the one set of them. Uh, but I'll put a link in the description below on those, on those vice grips I was just using. They are very, very handy. All right, and so these are the ramps for the ramp themselves, the tubes for the ramp themselves. So these are inch and a half 095 wall. Uh, and that seems really light, but it, it won't be light once we're done with it. Uh, I was trying to make this thing so that I can lift it, uh, since we are going to be taking this car, to car shows and stuff once we paint it up and, and make it look real nice. Um, so I was really struggling with what I was going to do for the very leading edge. Um, I, at first, I was thinking about mitering those so that they'd be flat on the ground. Um, but then I thought that was really worthless. I mean, we can we can run over something uh, an inch tall or an inch and a half tall if, if we need to. So what I did is just mitered them so they're going vertical. And then we're going to put an angle iron on the front for the leading edge and, and then another one right on top. So um, now we got to build a bunch of triangles since those are light wall tubing. Uh, we got to build a bunch of triangles so that uh, it is as strong as possible. So uh, you'll, you'll see me kind of going through and uh, just make each leg when you're when you're measuring for your triangles make each leg the same length so so you measure down the ramp uh say 20 inches uh and then measure down down the vertical tube 20 inches uh and then your angles on both sides will be the same um so as long as as long as when you're measuring for it yeah those both legs are even uh then both angles on the on your your diagonal brace will be the same if that makes sense Okay, and you're noticing that all my tri triangles are open face on the ground. Um, so I'm not putting uh, a tube uh, along the ground. And I did that on purpose since we are taking this out in the field. I don't want to put a brace going along the ground making those complete triangles. Uh, so we have our vertical support. So, so as, as the car pushes down, it's pushing on the leg and then it's distributing in the, into that triangle there. But I didn't want to connect to the tips of the triangles that are on the ground uh, in case the ground isn't perfectly even. I do want the ramp to be able to flex a little bit for that. Um, Otherwise, otherwise, as you're pulling up it, it's going to be teetering around on the uneven ground. So uh, the other option would be to make those solid and then put adjustable feet down. So when you set it down, uh, you'll you'll be able to uh, put adjust your feet to accommodate for uneven ground. Like uh, most parking lots and stuff are asphalt. Um, so obviously asphalt isn't perfectly flat. Uh, you know, they, they, they basically just dump it out, kind of spread it around and then roll it with a, uh, a roller. So it, it, it's not nearly as flat as concrete generally is. Um, so, so that was kind of the idea there. Um, we are going to put some leveling feet on the main frame of it. Um, and we will get to that here in just a little bit. So what I'm cutting now, I have to put a big miter on it. So we have to make I don't want to leave that just 12 inches wide because as you're driving up it and flexing, 
uh, the load isn't straight up and down. The load is actually going to be pushing out, uh, depending on what side of the car you're on. Uh, you have the ramp on the car. The load is actually going to be pushing out away from the car. Um, so we need to, we need to put some some legs out on it so that that doesn't just flop over. Uh, being that it's so tall, if this were a shorter ramp. Uh, like the one in the picture at the very beginning, uh, it's it, it's not flexing up enough to where it's going to be pushing out to the side uh, as much. But this thing being so tall, this one is over 30 inches tall, um, it, it definitely will be getting pushed to the side. And I want to make sure that that doesn't uh, just flop over on the side. So I'm using a... Uh, this is just a steel cutting saw. Well, it's a it's a metal cutting saw. I have a steel blade in it. Uh, and then I just adjusted my depth so that I'm not going to cut my table in half right here. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are seeing that going, oh my God, you're cutting your table. But I'm not. I'm, I'm, I have my depth cut to exactly inch and a half. And then the, and then the, the tubes were a quarter inch off the table. So I was able to get through it that way. Um, so there they are on there. Uh, and then we'll box in the bottom. And then we're going to add our feet here in just a little bit. Right, so here we'll walk around it so you can kind of get a three-dimensional visual of it. Um, so I did add that little stop, and that was kind of hard to see. Uh, the I, I made I put a larger than an angle iron stop, not that you really need it, but just so you don't accidentally roll over the, the front of it um, and put a huge dent in the bottom of your, uh, on the bottom of your car. Um, that yeah, that would be uh, that would be an embarrassing day uh, if you drove over the ramp. Um, so there it is. Uh, now we'll weld it up. I'm just going to weld it in real time since I can weld pretty fast. So here I go welding it in real time. Yep. See how fast I am? Uh, so yeah, that's sped up, I think about 20 times or so, or so. I'm not actually sure what I ended up speeding it up to, but um, it doesn't take very long to weld it. Uh, it I, I really need to put an exhaust fan in this shop though, because it does get smoky. So, okay, so here is the little Harbor Freight mini lathe and I do have a series on this little thing. Um, this ended up being a pretty cool little lathe and I did convert it to the metal gears on the inside. Um, so I will uh, eventually up, uh, get that video uploaded or edited and then uploaded. Because uh, this, this is a handy little tool and if you wait for them to go on sale, you can get them for, I think they go on sale for about 500 bucks. Um, and it has been... Uh, just a lifesaver so far. I've only had it for about a month or so, but I used it um, a, a few times. I've even done some pretty big stuff for the excavator on it uh, without problems. I did strip out the original plastic gears, uh, the main drive gears on it, um, but for the most part, it, it has been good. And now that it has metal gears in it, I don't have to worry about that. Um, so, and it's great for just doing little stuff like this, uh, making these spike bolts. So these are gonna be our feet. They're gonna be adjustable. Um, so that uh, my my plan is that they will dig into the ground um, in, into asphalt so that the ramp won't slide uh, on concrete. It's going to slide anyway, most likely, uh, because they're obviously not going to dig in. If it does dig in, it's going to break. It uh, probably take some chips out of the floor. But in asphalt, uh, that's that that surface is so is so bumpy. They sh it should find a nice spot in the surface. Uh, there it is in my little inserts. Um, it should find a, a dent in the surface and and hopefully the ramp won't slide around if you're in the middle of a parking lot at a car show so you're trying to pull up on it and the ramps are pushing away from you so uh these should work out pretty good for that uh we'll have to give them a test um maybe next year i guess uh at the next car show um i do want to have this thing powder coated and stuff so i will probably be dressing it up at some point a little later and then we'll be making signs and stuff for it you know bring them some attention towards our channel. So I'm just welding them on uh, as far out to the outside as I can and still be able to adjust them um, so that it has a, as wide of a footprint as possible without being a tripping hazard or something as people are walking around it.
Well, I am really happy with the way that thing turned out. Uh, if you noticed, I did put a tube between it and the forelift uh, point. You can see it right there. Um, I put a tube there so it wouldn't slide. I didn't really want to take chunks out of my concrete with our po pokey feet there. Uh, those are meant for asphalt, not for concrete. And, and it probably would slide anyway uh, on there, but I didn't want to put the chunks in my concrete uh, as they were trying to dig in. If it, if, if it were to start pushing as I was driving up on it, it may, it may have worked uh, and stayed, but I, I didn't want to risk it and, and have a bunch of scratches in my concrete so this car has front and rear sway bars so this these are an ultra four style sway bar and it still flexes uh that's what they're meant to do it is holding the rear wheel up just a little bit right now so there is more suspension in it um but the sway bar is holding it up a little bit but i i just about uh had that calculated just perfectly on on being able to flex uh you want it to still be able to flex but uh you want the sway bar to be as stiff as possible and allow you to flex so and they worked out really really good so i'm pointing right here i i do have an interference issue with my crossover steering and the arm for the sway bar uh so we're going and i would like to uh, address the angle of it a little bit uh it, it when the car's just sitting flat on the ground i have too much angle there so we're going to put a longer drop pitman arm on it uh and then if we have to put some shape into that arm so it doesn't hit the sway bar uh sway bar arm so anyway thanks for watching we'll see you again real soon we got lots of cool stuff coming out um i'm not sure what the next video out's going to be i have about five yet that need to be edited uh and then obviously a lot of projects to do yet so thanks for watching we'll see you again really soon